Hi, hi, hi. Hope you are, hope you are. Hope you swell, swell, swell. Hope you wavy, hope you wavy. Hope you gravy, hope you gravy, hope you gravy, hope you gravy, hope you gravy. Are you good? Are you good? Hope you're good, hope you're good, hope you're great. I hope you're fantastic. I hope you're swell. I hope you're like over the moon, winning, joy, abundance, all that good stuff. In fact, here's, here's all of that wellness, health, happiness, peace, prosperity over you. Take it, take it, take it. All of it for you, okay? I make music, guys. I make music. I make music. I think a song a day challenge will go to drop a song a day until the end of the year. Um, I got four songs coming out tomorrow. Going forward, it'll be seven songs. I post clips of all the music I make on my shorts tab, on my music, on my YouTube shorts tab. So go to my shorts tab if you want. If you want that. And then and the link in description as well. Link in description if you want to go to my Spotify, my Apple Music, my YouTube Music. Link in description, link in description, link in description. I've been reading a book called Black Red Nicks and White Devils by Thomas Sowell. I'm still early on in the book, but it's been quite interesting. So far, he's been talking about... Uh, this, this is a black man who wrote this, by the way, for those who are sensitive about these sort of things. He's just been talking about black culture and the misconceptions a lot of people have about it. So... If you look at all the oh, black American culture specifically. So if you look at black American culture and look at all the issues that plague a lot of these black communities, the violence, the sex, the drugs, the drinking, the fatherlessness, promiscuity, all these sorts of things. Sometimes people just view that as just black culture. Like that's just how black people are, which is it's racist. It's not true. I think it's a symptom of a bigger problem. Of uh, a lack of cohesion in a community and a lack of direction and a lot of wrong thinking that leads to a lot of those behaviors. And we know this because we've observed these behaviors. So what the book outlines is something, a very interesting history of Europeans, the, the, the people that came to America and settled from Europe, specifically from the UK. So Ireland, Scotland, um, England, the borderlands of those countries. And what happened when they settled in the South and those sort of behaviors and, and the disparity from the more central regions of those countries, of your Englands and your Irelands, the, the, and the, the people from the center of those countries, more central regions, would go to the north part of America, and the people from the borderlands of those countries would go to the, the south. And there was an incredible difference in <clears throat> outcomes, in behaviors and outcomes. So let's this. Let's, let's, Let's briefly, let's go over it, okay? Uh, so, to north, affluent, 
successful, educated, innovative, the South, poor, disorganized, uneducated, violent, unproductive. There are several examples of this. Um, businesses often left mismanaged. They loved in the South. So the, the people we called red, you, you'd call rednecks, hillbillies, whatever you want to call them, these terms that used to describe these people that are typically from the South. This, this is like 1800s, I guess. Yeah, keep in mind, I'm talking about the 1800s. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about back then. Although we still see elements of it now. Um, businesses would often be run poorly or mismanaged because owners would leave their businesses unattended to, to go drink with their friends, to go attend some jewel. That was another thing. Uh, or to go fishing or so on and so forth they always prioritized short-term pleasure over long-term gains so businesses often served a, a hand-to-mouth function where it's like we, we, we get we barely get by and we're okay with that and people who would come from the north would write about these sort of things and talk about how shocking it is <clears throat> To come and experience such terrible service at, at these um, southern establishments, how hard it is to get good service, good business, how there were no. Uh, okay, the, I don't want to get off topic, there's something else I wanted to get into, but. Um, so let's, let's say uh, just dairy, for example, so milk products. Butter was a very popular commodity and you know the south is typically known for its farmland and all these cows and while the southerners had such a large percentage maybe like a, a third of all the cows in the country or something like that, i don't know it was some big percentage of cows and whatnot they produced the tiniest fraction of all the milk products of the dairy and the milk the this the cheese the this the that even though they had all the resources to make these products they produced the smallest amount of these products in fact they would import butter from f countries overseas more than they actually made for themselves which is mind-boggling and when they did make butter it was of such a poor quality it, it was not comparable to the butter of the northern part of America. Um, and people would, would come from the north and, and write about these sort of things. That's how we know about this sort of stuff. And, and all this historical documentation. Um, so they were just... They had all the resources to further themselves and they never did. Another example is farming... The tilling the land when you're when you're tilling the land and it's on a plant season and whatnot you have to cut down trees and remove the stumps it's not enough to just chop the tree you have to remove the stumps so you can remove the roots and all that sort of stuff and have level ground that's just clean you can use the whole field but removing the stumps required a lot of effort it wasn't easy so what they would do is they just work around it they, they wouldn't remove the stumps and this obviously le uh, leads to 
lower yields and crops and so on and so forth. It's not it's not an ideal. It reduces your efficiency. In the north, they'd always remove the stumps. Like they worked hard. So you're seeing like patterns of of laziness, of cutting corners, of not doing what is required of you to in order to be successful. They had all the resources they lived in land that was very favorable and they had a lot of natural resources um, that they didn't mine and it was actually dumbfounded to people who'd come and find these uh, repositories of extremely expensive minerals that were not being mined not being taken advantage of it's like why are you guys just sitting on this money why are you not taking advantage of it? It would take people from the north coming in and exploiting this. And the southerners would write about how we're not we're not exploiting our opportunities. Like there's so much wealth here, and we're not we're not using it. And we're not taking advantage of it. And you know, people would write about how so. There'd be these um, rivers and streams in the land. So when you, you when you're with your horse and your carriage and you're, you're transporting goods, for example, and now you need to cross this river, sometimes it means you have to go into the water and then come out the other side if it's shallow enough. But then a solution for that emerge, which is to build a bridge. And if you work hard enough, you, um, you can build it and. and the river is not too wide. You can build a bridge in like a day if you work hard and you know, efficiently. Um, so in the north, that's what they would do: build bridges. In the south, they would just walk through the river. They, they don't want to build bridges, and they'll do that all the time. They just never build bridges, and it resulted in these very inconvenient trade routes that made life very hard. So as when you're a northerner and you're visiting the south and you're seeing the, you know, what the fuck is going on? This place is so mismanaged. Um, so that's another example of inefficiency, laziness, lack of foresight, prioritizing short-term short, short -term pleasure over long-term gain. Um... to the most social side of things a lot of violence a lot of arguments very deadly arguments um, things that would, would often turn very violent very quick and people would die and the way they would kill each other was also very barbaric you, you would hear stories of uh, what was the one instance I don't wanna I don't wanna make stuff up but it's just very intense stuff where when you read about it you're like these people are extremely violent I'm talking about like body parts being removed ears nose being bitten off stuff like that and people are cheering for this sort of stuff like, like you wrong someone in, in some shape or fashion Maybe they, you say something and they feel insulted by it and then they're like, okay, I challenge you to a duel. Come outside, bro. And you fight and someone gets killed or very seriously injured in some extreme way that's irreparable. Um, so they were prone to violence. And that was also fueled by a lot of drinking and a lot of domestic abuse would come from that as well. So husbands beating up their wives and stuff like that um, it was a very chaotic culture a very chaotic society and violence was celebrated it was seen as a good thing to be violent and if a man says something to you and looks at you the wrong way 
you need to, you know, stand on business and deal with him. Even if it means killing him. It is very common. It is lawless. It is lawless. Um, it, was a, it was a rough place to live in. And people would write about it again. People would come from the north and see this and be like, what the fuck is going on here? Because they're not used to this. It's more orderly where they come from in the northern part of the states. Um, very promiscuous, indulging in all sorts of sexual behavior, even on Sundays when they're supposed to be going to church, off the church they go and engage in all sorts of extramarital activities, so outside of marriage they're having sex and doing all sorts of stuff like that, and it was normal. No one thought much of it. Have sex with whoever, whenever. Hey man, go crazy, go wild. And that would have all sorts of terrible consequences as well. Of course, we know this. Uh, whether it be fatherlessness, STDs, so on and so forth. And all sorts of issues that come from this, these sort of things. And now you're sleeping with your friend. And because of the violent culture, your friend feels slighted and he kills you. And it was a mess. Um, what else? Religiously, you know, how they conducted their religious services. Pastors were very animated. They would jump and shout and very loud, very charismatic, very hyperbolic and dramatic in how they'd speak. And it was like almost like a performance and it really get the crowd riled up and contrasted to church in the north which was more pragmatic intellectual where they're having structured debates trying to get into the meaning of scripture and trying to reason exactly what these texts are trying to tell us and so on and so forth and things like that you, you got this intellectual strain of religion that was beyond emotional and that were actually what what can we learn about our reality from this and that's how science as a field of study emerged as well because a lot of figures in science arose from that tradition of we want to learn more of our world that has been given to us by a creator if we learn more about this world we learn more about a creator that's literally how science is this field is established in Europe and in North America. It's a well-documented history of that. I think sometimes people think science and religion are divorced and the, the two have no relationship with each other. It's not true at all. The biggest names in science, Isaac Newton, Galileo Galilei, Johannes Kepler, the guy who discovered the laws of planetary motion, um... Nikolai Tesla, uh, Albert Einstein, a lot of these people believed in God. Albert Einstein was a deist. Nikolai Tesla was, it was he, he was a deist, but I don't want to say Christian because he had a complicated history of these faith, but he was definitely, he believed in a, a God. But Isaac Newton, Galileo Galilei, Johannes Kepler, and others like them, so many, um, but the, those are the big names. There's so many important names in science that we don't know the names of, but important people in science we don't know the names of, but they played a large role. But anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked. I say that to say the northern part of America, because of their approach to religion, this intellectual approach, birthed such an important part of modern science. They birthed modern science. Um, and so many institutions like Oxford and Harvard. Yale, Princeton, uh, those yeah, those those big three, and I'm sure several others were founded by Christian men because of this pursuit of this religious pursuit of wisdom, intellect, understanding the world around us. If you, you can see the religious tradition of a lot of these institutions as well, they try to hide it, they try to diminish it, but it's there. It's not hard to see. 
if you just go to these if you go to these institutions and you, you walk around and you read about them and so on and so forth you quickly see that okay the guy the guy that funded this was a man of faith or was a was a clergyman in some sort of in some form the guy who founded it was this and that and that it's, it was a religious man so you contrast that to the south not much came from the south in that regard um, so you're seeing these stark differences and then you correlate that to to black america today black community and you start to see a lot of parallels with the violence the drinking the substance abuse the sex the lack of motivation and um, work ethic and so on and so forth you start to see a lot of similarities and you realize oh this is a cycle and by the way these things happened in Europe as well so these people that came from the borderlands of these British countries um they were behaving the same way there before they got to America. And the people that came from the central regions of these countries were behaving the same way there as well. So there was that contrast of uh, good behavior and good outcomes versus bad behavior and bad outcomes in Europe as well when they, before they, they immigrated to the, the US. Um, for example, they were, they wouldn't skin their animals to have uh, clothes and wool and all, all sorts of stuff like that that they can then sell in order to generate income. They just wouldn't take advantage of, they had the animals, they just wouldn't skin them and sell the products. Not because they didn't know how, they just didn't have the, the, the motivation, the mindset. And we know that they had the skill because they would skin humans when they were fighting with the British, well, I mean with the English. When they're fighting with the English, uh, the Scots, I think it was the Scots. <laughs> was it the Scots or the Irish? I posted it on my community tab, so you can find that post. Uh, I think it was the Scots. One thing they would do is skin any English man they caught during the Little War. If they caught an Englishman, they would skin him and hang his skin in certain areas for people to see like oh shit these people are serious but that's so barbaric but they do that so they clearly knew how to skin creatures they just didn't do it because they were lazy or not motivated to do it for economic reasons when it comes to the animal products obviously you don't skin your animals alive kill the animal humanely first and then skin it don't skin anyone alive. Animal, human, doesn't matter. And don't kill humans. <laughs> but anyway, um, so they, they were do, they were they were doing a lot of this nonsense in Europe as well. So this idea that it's black culture is just false. It was inherited when black people were enslaved in the South. And by the way, slavery was a southern phenomenon. Slavery was not a northern phenomenon. That's another thing people must that people are so ignorant about. I'm not even from America, but anyway, um, the black people who lived in the South inherited a lot of these Southern traditions that they still perpetuate till this day. But it's like viewed as black culture. It's not black culture. Far from it. Because then you, um, I'm from South Africa. I live in South Africa right now. It's not our culture. <laughs> when when black people immigrate to America, and they live their lives, and you don't see them doing these sort of things. You don't see African immigrants or immigrants from the West Indies, so Jamaica, Barbados, whatever these these West Indie countries. When they come to America, you don't see them behaving like this. So it's clearly not black culture. It's and also black people very diverse. Like 
Africa is a continent and there's so many different types of black people. So there's that as well. So there's, there isn't a black culture in the same way there isn't a white culture. Like you have Italians, you have French, you have, you have Germans, you have uh, Russians, so on and so forth. They don't have one culture. These are very different people. In the same way, black people are very different types of blacks, whether it's Nigerians, Zimbabweans, Ghanaians, um, Moroccans. Moroccans are more Middle Eastern. Well, in terms of complexion. Um, but yeah, there's the Cameroon, Cameroonians, I don't know how you. Congolese, these are different types of black people who, who have different philosophies and yeah. But that being said, it's what well, this this thing of gang violence, just violence in general, promiscuity, all these negative behaviors. It's not, it's not a cultural thing that's just ingrained in black people. It's, it's racist to say that and it's not true because you've observed it in another group long before black people got to America you observed it in the Scots and the Irish and all those people that came from the borderlands of those countries and moved to the American South so it's simply not true that it's a black thing so that's why when we call it out, people need to stop being so sensitive and be like, oh, we call it out because it needs to be called out and it needs to change. Because it doesn't lead to growth, all it leads to is destruction. I encourage you to read the book, you'll learn a lot about a lot of these behaviors that were exhibited in the past by different people and how certain mindsets and I guess environmental factors breed certain behaviors and outcomes and that transcends race and gender and all this sort of stuff. I hope that was informative. I have a Thank you for the individual watching this right now. Thank you for making them whole, unique, and guide them on a path towards peace, prosperity, and purpose, 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 Thank you for blessing them with incredible people who love them and take care of them and bring the absolute best out of them. And that you're maintaining the ones that are there as well to do the same thing. And thank you for blessing this individual with the spirit of gratitude. So thank you give thanks for all the good things in their life. Be aware of these things. And by giving thanks, they can find things to look forward to and be happy about and find peace and contentment and attract even more blessings. Um Thank you that your presence is felt in this individual's life, that you're acting on their behalf, that you're loving them, that you're taking care of them, that you're letting them know that you're God, you're real, and you're, you're in their life. And um, good health, long life, and happiness over this person, everyone they care about. 
Mind in my pain, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray, in Jesus' name, I pray, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.